Alan Parker's adaptation of the popular Pink Floyd album The Wall, with a screenplay written by Roger Waters, portrays the key theme of isolation stylistically and distinctively in a manner that allows the film's narrative and protagonist to express devastation through a purely visual medium, utilising both live-action animation by political cartoonist Gerald Scarf and the songs from the Pink Floyd concept album. The film focuses on Pink. As a young boy, he loses his father in the war. The war's effects are depicted through a highly apocalyptic imagery, an animated sequence that illustrates a dark bird with large talons devastating a city, gripping a large chunk of the city and leaving only a bloody wound, accompanied by Goodbye Blue Sky. The impact of Pink losing his father in the war is huge. He clings onto a man at the local playground who pushed him on the roundabout, only to be scolded by him. He examines his father's belongings as a way to create a connection. His mother, having to play role of mother and father as a single parent, is portrayed as overprotective. This overbearing protection may have good intentions to provide protection from the dangers of the wider world, but it establishes the foundation for Pink's preference for isolation. If things are going unfavourably, Pink now feels a protection through disconnection. The song Mother highlights that Pink's metaphorical wall is now in its early stages. Lyrics such such as, mother do you think they'll drop the bomb? Mama's gonna make all your nightmares come true, and she won't let you fly but she might let you sing, all reflect the oppressive, overbearing relationship Pink had with his mother. She doesn't want Pink to be hurt by the dangers of the wider world, and that means trying to hide him from them, planting her own fears into her son. As a child, Pink's creativity is stifled, as he writes in a little black poem book at school. His teacher takes it from him and mocks him for his writing. Although Pink likely should have been paying attention in class, his teacher's reaction helps nobody. This school classroom feels like an oppressive environment, which is reinforced by the sequences that follow, accompanied by Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall Part 2. Children wear masks that make them unidentifiable as they walk in single file lines through a machine forcing them to work, and finally, are forced through a meat grinder. These metaphorical images reflect Pink's own experiences with this education system. It feels like an environment established only to keep young people down. The students create a backlash and revolt, destroying and burning the place to the ground, even throwing their teacher onto the bonfire. But alas, all of this is Pink's imagination. This reveals a lot about Pink. The film has now established how he delves further into his own imagination to escape the hassle of the wider world. Much of the film's more visually surreal sequences could likely be attributed to Pink simply imagining them. Other sequences that establish Pink's withdrawal further into himself as he grows up into a popular figure includes a scene where his wife asks him, is anyone home? Joking while Pink offers no reaction. A scene where a groupie attempts to tempt Pink, however, he sits unaffected, unable to enjoy anything, only to release a burst of aggression and hate on the hotel room, haunted by images of his wife and her affair, his wife visiting him in the form of a silhouette that contorts into a writhing beastly creation there to plague his thoughts. Further reinforcing Pink's devastation over his wife is that in a swimming pool, overlaid images of his wife are implemented. The editing of the images of Pink's wife with another man overlaid on top of Pink in the swimming pool implies the type of images Pink is regarding, causing more despair. We see those images for a short moment, however Pink is thinking of them constantly. With the sequence accompanied by Uncomfortably Numb, Pink sits unconscious in his chair while his manager and doctors try to wake him. He is lifted out of the room as the images become hazier and as his skin seems to rot, carried away downstairs into a darkening despair into the back of a limousine in which he tears away at his rotting skin and becomes a new Pink. All of these images are figments of Pink's imagination and demonstrates the extent of his distance from the wider world. World. He's delving further and further into himself. Each element of trauma, the end of his relationship with his wife, his struggle in school, childhood memories of nursing a rat only for the rat to die, the loss of his father, becomes a brick within his wall. 
Each trauma a reason to build his wall higher and higher. A sequence where Pink has transformed into a dictatorial figure and performs to an audience, he isolates certain members of the audience expressing a prejudice for homosexuality, people of colour, and even people smoking marijuana. The audience singles out these people and becomes aggressive, and as these people take to the streets, harassment ensues. People of colour are targeted and even forced out of their own homes. At this point, Pink's hatred knows no boundaries. If he feels downtrodden and treated, then he wishes to share that same experience with everyone else. It's a nightmarish sequence that takes its aesthetic from the opposite side of the militant spectrum. Instead of the pride and honour of the military service that his father belonged to, giving his today for our tomorrows, this imagery Pink instills is more national socialist and oppressive. The grand finale of Pink's trial is a completely animated sequence. Night nightmarish, satirical, and Kafkaesque. There is no escape for Pink here, as he has delved too far into isolation, but has allowed some personal feelings to be released into the wider world while sitting on the floor of a toilet cubicle. After all, he is human. The trial brings his teacher, his wife, in the form of a nightmarish creation who seems to just criticise Pink in the sequence, and his mother in highly caricatured forms, his mother taking the form of a speeding aircraft further reinforcing the overbearing nature, but in a satirical form. Before she transforms to take a ragdoll, the depiction of Pink who has lost control in her arms, begging the court to take her baby home. These are the significant bricks to his wall. The final sentence for revealing human emotion despite the attempts Pink has made to isolate himself, delivered by a judge depicted as a disgruntled backside, is to have the wall torn down. As the wall is torn down, exploding the screams of Pink are heard. What's more devastating, having been used to isolation, only to be exposed to the wider world unprepared? In conclusion, Alan Parker's Pink Floyd Le Wall stylistically and intelligently captures the nightmarish aspects of isolation, the psychological impact of loss, overprotection, stifled creativity and seclusion on a young mind. Pink is a tragic protagonist and his torments, his flaws and hatreds are expressed in his film through a distinctive aesthetic that applies both a dreamlike filmmaking and psychedelic surrealistic and contorting animation style effortlessly. For the casual viewer, this may seem little more than a 90 minute music video, but the film certainly offers much in terms of narrative and stylistic depth.